Okay, so welcome to another video for CA GCSE revision specification from 2017 onwards and this one is also for paper one section B and it's for tasks four and five which is the reading to access non-fiction and media element, more specifically the media texts or the, the advertisements. Obviously they are a type of non-fiction text. Um, in this section the thing that's most likely to come up is either a book cover or some sort of brochure or leaflet. So now I'm focusing on book covers. Um, generally, when I look at a book cover, I like to think, okay, what's the narrative point of view? What's the tense? Why has this tense been chosen? What techniques have been included in terms of language devices? Um, is there a particular deliberate creation of imagery in any way, maybe through personification, simile, metaphor, um, maybe through, I don't know, onomatopoeia, alliteration, and then what other techniques are there as well. So let's think about basic things like the adjectival and adverbial phrases and what they convey as well. How is it persuasive? And do not forget that no matter what text comes up, your entire focus is always tap type. So book cover, who's the audience and what's the purpose? Okay, in this case, you can also consider gap as well, genre, audience and purpose, because you've got book covers and obviously a diversity of genres within that. Um, anyway, as you're reading through the blurb on the book cover, please make sure you're hunting for techniques. It's quite short, it's snappy, and you're told that you have 17 minutes, and this time I'm going to read it. So below is the text from the blurb of a book. How has language been used in the blurb of The Black Crow Conspiracy by Christopher Edge to create a sense that this novel will be an exciting teen read? Look at the clues they are giving you in this question. Exciting teen read. So those are your question terms, okay? Um, and they want you to consider the language. Also, though, don't forget things like tone and punctuation. It's 1902. London is looking forward to the new king's coronation and ignoring the threat of war from across the sea. Penelope Tread Treadwell, the pen behind best-selling author Montgomery Flinch, is cursed with writer's block. She needs a sensational new story for her magazine, The Penny Dreadful, or her magazine, The Penny Dreadful, will go under. So when a mysterious letter arrives confessing to an impossible crime, Penny thinks she has found a plot to enthrall her readers. The theft of the crown jewels by the diabolical Black Crow. Ghostly apparitions, kidnap and treason. This is the stuff of great stories. But what if it's all true? And then task five, spend eight minutes, um, ten marks available, five per feature. Study the photograph of the book cover below, select two presentational features used in the image to support the idea that this is a novel, this novel is an exciting read, explain the intended effect and remember you're looking for colour, layout, images and font for that. Now let's move on. Now as you can see on this page I have included a mark scheme that I have made for task 4 which is the language analysis. So. Short dramatic opening sentence, it's 1902, shows the setting, present tense creates immediacy and immerses the reader in the storyline, personification, London is looking forward to, creates drama, contrast or juxtaposition, looking forward, ignoring the threat, suggests the plot will be thrilling, alliteration of the threat creates a sinister tone and suggests the plot will be exciting, ellipses from across the sea, dot dot dot, creates a cliffhanger and makes the reader want to read on, the main protagonist is introduced and endeared to the audience, Penelope Treadwell. The pseudonym, Montgomery Flinch, creates a sense of excitement. Personification, pen behind, shows that the main character is a hard-working writer and endears her to the reader. Verb, cursed, suggests a gripping plotline and makes the reader want to read on to discover if the story has a happy ending. Sympathy created for the main character as well. The modal verb needs creates a sense of urgency. Colloquial expression go under hints at the thread of the character's business. Again, makes it intriguing and thrilling. Adjectives, mysterious, impossible crime, diabolical, thrills the reader and creates suspense. Um, verbs confessing and enthrall grip the reader and intrigue them. Dramatic sejural pause, readers, the theft of the crown jewels, creates tension and impact, introduction of the mysterious villain, the Black Crow, and obviously the nomenclature of their name, 
Rule of three, ghostly apparitions, kidnap and treason suggest this plot will be action-packed and rife with danger. The rhetorical question, what if it's all true, intrigues the reader and makes them want to read on. And there's the same little section that's at the bottom of every single say mark scheme that basically if you come up with something the examiner doesn't, that they will credit you for that. Task five, response time eight minutes, total ten marks. You could credit any of the, the following with a suitable explanation. So you've got dark muted colours, bright vivid green contrasting with the dark colours, dominant image of the young girl, the silhouetted buildings, the moon in the background, the crew surrounding the title, um, the swirling capitalised title, and here's just a little section here of the kind of thing they're looking for. So if you have a confident and convincing explanation, you get all four marks because you've got your one mark for whatever of these you've mentioned. If you have a competent explanation, then you get three. Straightforward but valid, you get two. And general attempt, you get one. Credit, uh, the dark colours could reinforce the genre. Vivid colours will juxtapose with the dark colours and attract a young audience. The image of the girl introduces and endears the reader to the main character. Silhouetted buildings reinforce the sense of mystery and reiterate the setting. Moon emphasises the mystery and thriller elements. Crews create an ominous effect and link to the name of the villain or title. Swirling font emphasises the profession of the protagonist and creates a sense that this is for a predominantly female teen readership. And remember that tasks four and five will always be linked. They will always be taken from the same text. Now, let's look at a sample response that a student has done. This would be full marks, but they didn't do it in the time allocated. I did it in a tutoring session with them. Um, so we kind of crafted it together and talked about it and teased out ideas. Obviously, 17 minutes and then 8 minutes for the presentational isn't really that much time. So you need to be really economical with your time. You could say less than this person has said and still get full marks. It's the depth of your analysis and how well you justify or explain yourself. So let's take a look. So first of all, I've just given her some general guidance and I've said consider genre, audience and purpose. The purpose of any book cover is to create enigma and intrigue the reader and leave them wanting to read on. Uh, reinforce the genre so you know if it's the right kind of book for you, endear you to the main protagonist, maybe even introduce the setting, encourage you to buy or read the book, inform you of the setting and inform you of the narrative aka the plot line. So, The Black Crew Conspiracy. Christopher Edge opens with a short dramatic sentence written in the present tense. This is shown in It's 1902. This has the effect of making the reader feel like they have actually been transported back in time and gives them a more immersive experience. This also sets the scene and lets us know when the story will be set. This will intrigue fans of historical teen fiction. He then uses personification to further reassure the reader that this is an exciting read. This is shown in London is looking forward to the coronation. The use of personification again creates drama and intrigue and suggests to the reader that every single citizen is excitedly looking forward to this event, the crowning of a new king. He then goes on to use a contrast or juxtaposition, looking forward, ignoring the threat. This has the impact of first making the reader get caught up in all the excitement, but then bringing them back to reality again, suggesting there will be hardships for the character to overcome. And sorry, I am speeding so quickly through this. This would entertain a teen readership who would be interested in plot lines with high impact and plot twists. A dramatic tone is created through the alliteration, the threat, which adds to the sense of shock. This would draw the reader in as they would want to know who succeeds, London or its enemies. The author then uses punctuation for effect by using ellipses. This is shown from across the sea. The cliffhanger leaves the reader on tender hooks, eagerly awaiting to find out who wins, and causing them to question who will be victorious. And I'm just making this a little bit bigger so you can see it. The author introduces us to the main character, Penelope Treadwell. The inverted syntax, or word order, positions the character first, showing her importance and letting the reader see that she is the main character, the protagonist, the hero. The blurb then goes on to give the reader background information on her. The reader finds out that she is writing under a pseudonym, Montgomery Flinch, creating intrigue because the reader will want to read on, excited to find out what the backstory to this is and discover if she gets caught or if it's all worth the risk. Pen Behind is an example of personification which creates a sense of mystery. 
It also lets the reader know that she is a creative, hardworking character, endearing her to them. The use of verbs is strong, creating imagery in the mind of the reader, shown through the strong, vivid verb choice, cursed, which lets the reader know the main character is suffering from writer's block. This creates sympathy for the main character as we know that she is best-selling and therefore usually good at her job. The reader is intrigued and wants to read on to find out if the character ever overcomes this. The use of the modal verb needs creates a tone of urgency and emphasises how important this is to her livelihood. The writer uses the typographical effect of italics, emphasising the name of the magazine. Teamed with a parenthesis, textually structures the magazine name on its own on the page. This gives it visual impact and creates a sinister tone as the audience reads it. The proper noun, the penny dreadful, lets the reader know that the magazine specialises in the horror genre, intriguing fans of the horror or thriller genre. It also strikes a sinister chord with the reader, making them worry about what is so dreadful, dreadful, and alerts them to the gory nature of the stories Penny writes. It's also a pun because her name is Penelope and they're called the Penny Dreadfuls, although the Penny Dreadfuls genuinely did exist. Um, and you can research those if you want to find out more about them. Here's a shocker. They were sold for a penny. The writer uses the colloquial expression and simple language go under to hint at the threat um, of the company going out of business. The use of simple language and conversational style intrigues and excites a young, predominantly teen readership. Again, the reader's interest is piqued and they will want to read on to find out if the main character will succeed or fail. The writer uses interesting adjectives such as mysterious to thrill the reader and make them aware of interesting plot twists which could save Penny's business. Further use of adjectives is used in Impossible Crime, which makes the reader wonder what is so bad about the crime that it seems impossible, and who is behind such terrible deeds. All of this contributes to the sense that this will be a thrilling, exciting book for teenagers to enjoy. The verb choice confessing suggests to the reader that there will be secrets and mysteries to uncover. The reader is intrigued as to who the mysterious confessor is and is drawn into the narrative of the story. The further choice of vivid verbs, such as enthrall her readers, creates the sense that her stories are gripping. This causes the reader to want to read on to find out what it is about the main character and her tales, which are so gripping and intriguing. The writer uses punctuation for effect through the use of colon. This is shown in Readers, The Theft of the Crown Jewels. This creates a dramatic pause and then a big reveal, shocking the reader and making them curious as to whether or not the crime Penny is using as inspiration for her story will be solved. The adjective diabolical is used to describe the antagonist, aka the villain of the story. And you don't have to use fancy terminology like this, villain will do. Same with protagonist, you can just say main character or hero. Um, the Black Crow. This creates a sinister first impression of them and lets the reader know they are an evil character. Black Crow is obviously a pseudonym as well. The nomenclature of their name has connotations of evil, with Black being associated with darkness and corruption and Crows being bad omens. Again, this would intrigue fans of the thriller or mystery genre who would be curious as to who the Black Crow truly is and if they really are as bad as they sound. The writer finishes with a rule of three, ghostly apparitions, kidnap and treason, suggesting there will be lots of interesting twists in the narrative, intriguing the reader and making them want to read on, further hinting at the dangers that the main character must overcome, reinforcing the thriller genre and hinting at elements of the horror or gothic genre. Finally, the writer uses a rhetorical question, but what if it's all true? The question stays in the reader's head and makes them want to seek out an answer to their question and hints that the supernatural influences on Penny's writing may actually be true. Terrifying and exciting a teen readership. Now, that is actually in mostly chronological order. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is chronological order. You don't have to do it in chronological order. In fact, you might find it easier to group similar techniques together. Um, I've just chosen chronologically because... It makes sense to me and it made sense to the student I was tutoring who came up with this response. Task five, um, they've said dark muted colours have been used on the front cover and then they've explained this by saying the heavy use of the colour black hints at the storyline. This is going to be a mystery or thriller genre. Dark colours also connote the danger and intrigue in the plot. The title is The Black Crow Conspiracy so the colour black links to this black crow whoever or whatever they may be. There are also connotations of death and evil through using the colour black, as it is colour often worn by villains or at funerals. Furthermore, it is used by criminals to blend in. 
and then the dominant image of the young girl. A young girl has been positioned off to the right hand side of the book cover. She takes up most of the front cover and is the dominant image, placing her at the centre of the reader's attention. The girl's positioning and prominence on the cover lets the reader know that this is the main character of the story, helping them imagine who she is and endearing her to them. Her facial expression and hair and pigtails lets us know that she is a young heroine and attracts a young audience who will admire her. Um, hopefully this kind of has been useful in helping you structure and you'll also notice that it's been colour coded as well or at least the language section which is by the way again can I remind you out of 20 has been colour coded. This one is out of 10 and you can see that the level of detail there is so excruciatingly drawn out and so sophisticated that they couldn't not get full marks. It's just too detailed. They deserve it. So try to come up with something similar. And you can see they weren't the only answers, um, although I'm pretty sure they've covered everything in the language component. But for task five, there were definitely other things they could have said, but they've just picked on colour and image. Okay, so you've got layout, font, blah blah as well. To, to deal with too. You've got background, you've got foreground, you've got all of these other fantastic things you could talk about. You could even talk about the fact that there's actually a little tagline there as well. Crime can be stranger than fiction. And the fact that that's been placed there to intrigue you and thrill you. Again, um, please try to remember that this is not the only thing that could come up. That it could be leaflets or brochures or something from a website as well. I've just chosen it because it's one of the more likely things that will come up, book covers and leaflets. So please try to revise the two. And all the best. Also, if you have any siblings who sat the older specification, you might find it useful to borrow some of their multimodal notes. Even though it was compare and contrast, you could still find something really useful in there that might help you and guide you towards examination success.